ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾನ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಪರಮಸುಖದ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಸ್ಯಾಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಏಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವೀ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ಓಡೇಶನ್ ಸು ಸದ್ಗುರು ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ದಿ ಗಿವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೋರ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಎ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ದಿ ಈಥರ್ ಇನ್ಫಿನಿಟ್ eternal beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme precept yoga vashishtha in upasham prakarana section 53 and se yuddalaka practices om upasana Sage Vashishtha continued, O Rama, having thus ascertained his pure intellect, implying having settled his mind and invigorating his buddhi intellect, Sage Uddalaka adopted a lotus pose and with eyes closed began to practice meditation on Om. his chant of om sounded like a bell reverberating upward sample you breathe in oh as you practice more your whole spine resonates and it promotes purity of sushumna channel the central channel and then sejo dalka continued chanting om until pranas reached the crown of his head and he found himself face to face with the absolute self this pointing to is just like sit down face face the sun <laughs> the sun is far away but you begin your setting without creating any problem in your mind how can i face brahman <laughs> just the mental mentally settled the practical practice has two stages the stage focused on prana and a stage focused on antahakarana mind process mind prana and mind they are interrelated if you control the mind prana automatically becomes calm and when we talk of prana don't identify it with your breath breath is a result of prana within and so controlling the breath allows you to harmonize the pranas so controlling the breath itself should not become your mental focus how long can i hold it <laughs> it is balancing the breathing process that allows prana to be controlled so therefore normal pranayam has inhalation purak retention kumbhak exhalation rechak it's normal But here 
in this sadhana. But let me first conclude on that. As pranas are being harmonized, your mind opens up to a profound meditation. So while you are, prana is operating, in rechaka state, that's breathing out. During that time, your mind is turning towards identity of the soul, not with just with physical body. Yes, physical body is a first reality. But opening your understanding that you are identifying yourself with the entire physical world. Just little switch. Doesn't mean big work in your mind. You just like open your eyes and look at the window. It's a big area. <laughs> so as you Breathe out the rechak. That's your focus. And the mantra behind it, Om, I'm presenting to you, simplify this upasana. Awe. Awe, with awe you are breathing out. And you put a little silent edge into it. Ah. <laughs> So as you are breathing out, breathe out very relaxed. Feel you are shaking away all your world based on limited identity. Your whole world is being swept away. And it's like a river entering into the ocean. It's becoming the whole ocean. You are becoming Virat, all the cosmic. So as you have finished your exhalation, now begin to focus on O movement. Ah, O. And in that doing while Om, your focus is relaxing the mind. Your mind is no longer confined to your room. It is exp expanding into universe. Your mind is no longer confined to your individuality. It is cosmic. It's universal. How can you separate your mind from universal mind? How can your mind be separated from any individual in the world? That requires a bigger thinking. You are always a part of the universe. If universal mind is ocean, your mind is a wave in it. And a wave cannot say, <coughs> wave, wave cannot say, Rather, wave cannot wave, wave goodbye to the ocean. <laughs> so, that aspect, focus, you are simply touching it, not going into all detail. Detail operates automatically. But that's your insight. And Last letter of Om, M, is very sweet. Ma, Amma, Ma. <laughs> Where you have complete rest. You are in the arms of God. Ishwara level. Which is causal level of the universe. Just to remind you technical terms. Identified with the physical body, soul is known as Vishwa. Moving away from physical identity to universal identity in physical plane is called Virat. 
the Vishwa relates to Virat. Come to next level, you are identified with the body only through your mind. So be intelligent. There is nowhere you are in your body. Your body will not be there a body unless your mind tells you. So, the reality behind your body is mind. So, with a little maturer way, I am mind. And that mind is related to entire mind that has constructed, sustains, and does all cosmic operations. There is always mind needed. It's terrible intelligence behind every little thing. Every little flower, every little grass, every big thing, millions of of suns shining in the sky, all the stars. Behind that, the cosmic mind. How long a star will stay, all its life and what happens every moment is designed by a cosmic intelligence. And your mind relates to that cosmic mind. How, how much can you relate depends upon how can you relax your mind from the clutches of your ego. And it's a whole project. If you don't accomplish it in a few days, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's so. I have breathing out, rechak. Breathing in, oh. Automatically, your focus goes into the Agnya Chakra. When you are breathing out, your heart becomes free of burden. You are taking away all your physical stress. Breathing in, Agnya Chakra begins to activate. And that you don't go into all detail. Details are being told while I'm explaining. It's automatically. And then, third stage, enjoy that M. While you are breathing in, it's called Purak. You are filling in all your in, incompleteness, imperfection, all your negativity is being moved, moved, all your emptiness is being taken away. You are being filled, purak. Purak means filling up. And final stage, when you are breathed in, Surrender to God, absolute surrender. Next, you breathe out again. Follow the same thing, three stages. Ah, oh, mm. boom. Continue doing that for a short period. It can be just half an hour, more or less, depending upon your, or even lesser. Next, you open yourself to meditation. In meditation, now allow your mind to work upon A aspect. Here in meditation again, you can follow chakras of the spinal column, kundalini. Focus on your navel center and imagine the, at the lotus of the navel center is resonating with ah, om. But here you don't differentiate ah, u and ma, just om. Total om. The radiating from your navel. 
but while it is radiating, enjoy. I am the entire universe. If entire universe is difficult, just choose any one of them. I'm the air, blowing everywhere. I'm the water. I'm the clouds that I used to like to see, but I'm myself floating with it. Open your mind to that type of imagination. So that first stage of upasana. Next, you turn to your Agnya Chakra, or rather, can turn to your heart. Heart is the seat of your feeling, and you are now made. Meditating upon I am Taijas. Taijas, when you are highlighting your identity as astral body, as a mind, that identity is called Taijas. Taijas means effulgent. It is that Taijas that gives your physical body brightness and all its joyousness that expresses through it. If Taijas is not there, no matter how wonderful your body, but it's sunk. If Taijas is there, your body is bright. So that Taijas, as individual identity, individually identified with your subtle body, is Taijas. But identity, understand that Taijas is not individualized reality. It is universal. So I am Hiranyagarabha, universal identity, universal mind, cosmic mind is Hiranyagarabha. Hiranya means gold. Garabha is a womb. Gold here relates to absolute truth. To be masses, gold seems more easy to understand. So he is called Hiranyagarabha. So you develop that understanding that I am growing in the image of God. I am all intelligence spreading everywhere. And third stage, identified with your causal body, you are known as Pragya. Pragya has Two implications. Pra Agya, especially ignorant. <laughs> the entire world doesn't exist. You have nothing to do with the world. Another meaning. All knowing, pra jna, jna is jnana. Pra is most climax state of jnana. That I am one with God. I am the very source of. Creation, sustenance, dissolution of the world process. All in divine hand. I am that God. Your upasana is not ended yet. Now, having secured this aspect of three stages at physical plane, Vishwa, as Vishwa, I am Virat, all cosmic. cosmic reality, physical reality. As a mind, I am cosmic mind. And a causal, deep unconscious, I am one with the causal state of the whole universe, God himself. Now comes the fourth aspect of Om. Up till then, fourth aspect was quiet. Turiya, transcendental. 
The transcendental state is no longer your practice of pranayam, no longer your practice of meditation. It is samadhi. If you move away from all that, enter into deep silence. How deep can you go? That will depend. So that's the general outline of Om Upas. Keeping that in view, I will go on giving you now what the scriptures say. But this is the essence behind it. That will eat, reiterate some points. There are three and a half syllables in Om. First he meditated upon the A aspect of Om and associated it with the practice of Rechak, exhalation. By his mental vision he saw his body become empty of the pranas. Empty of the pranas simply means harmonization of the pranas. The pranas that are making you aware of the world, that the whole world is moving away. The pranas are just relaxing. In the same way as sage Agastya in ancient times had emptied the whole ocean by drinking it. Just reminding you where allegorical stories, you know, people read it and they digest it easily. <laughs> How can you drink up the whole ocean? <laughs> he drank it up in three sips. <laughs> when you allow your mind to understand you are not the physical body, the whole physical reality you have sipped, that's one sip. When you realize, when you develop understanding, you are not the subtle body, you have ne done the next sip. And you realize you are not the causal body, you have done the third sip. But I'm not focusing in that more detail, coming to now what you are practical learning now. So with all aspect, as you are breathing, exhaling, you start in a very simple way with your prana. And then you switch it after pranayam exercise into meditation movement. So pranayam is helping you to follow the process in a deeper level. Prana helps your mind. Mind helps your prana. You have to give some news to someone which can be shocking either positive or negative. And what do you say? Sit down. Breathe. <laughs> so, adjusting your prana is the first step. But as you begin to relax your prana, now mind takes over. Mind brings in its own experience of joy and Prana simply become humble, they become like pet. Pranas automatically follow. And as prana goes on becoming relaxed, mind goes on operating in a higher level. So both are dependent, in interrelated, supplement, complement relationships. Adopting the U aspect of Om, he practiced Kumbhaka, retention. Now, retention appears in two stages. You are holding the breaths, retaining it. But your goal is allowing the mind to relax so much that your holding the breath becomes very spontaneous, not a stressful movement. It becomes natural. So therefore, your focus is not just going after the duration of how much you hold. Your focus is how much you can allow your mind to relax. So therefore, rhythmic breathing becomes more important than abrupt breathing. 
During this state, the pranas were neither external nor internal. That's called Kumbhaka state. He became still like the ocean without waves. So this is the third step of the pranayam. You reach up, you breathe out. Purak, you are inhaling. Kumbhak, now you are quiet. He imagined that he had drawn nectar from the depths of his soul and thus became cool and calm like a mountain covered with snow. You didn't send yourself to Himalayas, you became Himalaya. Then the sage took recourse to the process of transcendence indicated by the half syllable of Om. Now comes the attention on the transcendental aspect of Om. A U M and transcendental. Up until now, transcendental was waiting. A U M, that was your focus. Now transcendental becomes focus. The pranayama stops. Your practice of upasana comes to climax. He withdrew his senses and remained steady in the pose of meditation. Even like a mighty elephant tied to a post. Don't take it literally, just a picture. You become a whole elephant. And not elephant that is wild, completely steady. Istit pragya. Then he proceeded to purify his mind in order to attain nirvikalp samadhi. Now he, that nirvikalp samadhi is its fourth point. In the beginning, early stages, you are practicing sadhana. You are allowing your mind to work upon by affirmation. Bring that type of visualization that you are quiet. You have gone into deep sleep. The whole world has vanished. And only you are not missing the world. Your sleep is perfect awakening. With the increasing purification of the chitta, Sage Uddhalaka gradually attained intuitive knowledge. He became free from the distractions caused by the world process and became established in the Supreme Self. The substratum of the world and the non-dual reality. Here now we have to understand the... When you watch a cinema show, there are two stages. One stage, you watch Watch for enjoying something positive. Or if your mind is interested in negative, then you watch, wait to entertain your mind by various events that are happening on the show. While entertaining, you have to allow time for the show to come to, come to an end. But while watching, you have another choice. Understand, to get, get into a deeper level of understanding what is causing the show. The vampire's mouth is filled with blood. <laughs> but now, instead of being shaken by the blood and all that, you smile. It's onion, garlic, tomato. <laughs> Ketchup, bukti. <laughs> Blood on the lips. <laughs> so 
So even while experiencing the world, you are not shaken by the world. Because the world is not intending to hurt anybody, even though it is not easy to understand. Every life is a challenge. Every soul has to go through terrible situations. But ultimately ends up like you have gone through a terrible dream. But even while in dream you saw so much catastrophe, saw your own neck broken. <laughs> but wake up, nothing has happened. So that waking up state has to be understood. So even while watching the show, even while experiencing the world, you are not lost in it. And that movement of moving away from being bonded with the world is a progressive movement. But how much should you progress? Progress comes to that state when you envision simply a screen. The screen is giving reality to all your show. The show is dependent upon projections. Projections are caused by your mind. The mind is creating the show. That's called yoga. Says yoga, chitta vritti nirodha. Chitta vritti, thought waves of your mind. Thought waves are all, all like what you, each time you tip your finger on computer, mouse, or whichever way. Each, each movement is a vritti. One little touch, the vritti opens up the whole Google. Another touch, another whole world. So vritti doesn't mean it is going after little objects one by one. It's a whole whirlpool of practical reality goes into your vrittis. <laughs> so, understand that two stages <laughs> Or as long as you are live conditioned by maya, you are enjoying the world through your mind. When the mind itself dissolves, what is left then? Just the screen. All the time you are enjoying it, the screen had not gone away. The screen was the reality behind everything you see. This idea, I am the experiencer, I am the subject, I am the seer. This world is being experienced. These are my experiences. All these we call bhava pratyaya. The presence of relative consciousness presence of all this, the world experience. When you go into deep level of enlightenment, the entire projection has gone away. Your attention has come to the screen. And screen alone is real. That's the truth behind it. All the time you watch the show, what's the truth behind your show? The screen. That was what you were looking at. <laughs> and yet you were screaming at the pictures. <laughs> well, going through experiences of pleasure, pain, and all the turmoil of the world. But behind all that, there is nothing but Brahman. <laughs> this is described in Vedanta as snake on the rope. All projection process is a snake. <coughs> Screen is like a rope. The rope is Brahman. Now coming to another stage of understanding. <coughs> this movement from the world of projection to the absolute reality has three steps. Mala, Vikshepa and Avarana. These are called granthis, knots of the heart. 
mala gross impurity is there. And you need to understand gross impurities are anger, hate, greed, an obsessive involvement in your bodily existence. You know, it's philosophy of behind malai, eat, drink, be merry, and become powerful. Go viral. <laughs> Though you have nothing to give. I'm joking. <laughs> <coughs> So first stage, mala, gross impurity. That gross impurity exists along with your in divine plan. Every soul cannot stay just without work. Everyone is involved in activity. Activity is designed for both, either to get more mala or clean up your mala. Karma gives, opens both doors and doors are open to every individual. If you are following spiritual paths, you are turning your attention how your karmas can become purposeful to your soul. Not keep the soul in whole, always in, in a state of bondage. But karmic mala continues you become more and more dependent upon the world. You don't know how your days will pass. You depend upon your body. You depend upon your neighbors. You dip I don't go through it. You depend upon so many things. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are left alone, sometimes you are in a worse condition. <laughs> you are dependent upon your negative memories. your regrets, your repentance, your depression. <laughs> and these are more powerful malas that need to be sublimated. So karma yoga is the answer behind removing mala. How to make your activity interesting, purposeful and purifying. And mantra behind, be good, do good. Follow that. Don't let that intention to be good be dumped. Don't develop the idea, let me just exist by hook or by crook, and get the money enough, and spend the last days watching the setting sun. Do a bad thing. <laughs> Mala based life has no other future. Karma yoga is relieves you from that type of predicament. But while karma is being made, turned purposeful, you have feeling level. Feeling must turn to bhakti devotion. Bring sweetness in your heart. What inspires you to do work? Love, different forms of love, but love is, divine love is the source. So bring that divine love, highlight it day by day by your japa, your <coughs> satsanga, and by adoring God in different forms, and there's a whole bhakti movement. Third stage, <coughs> So mala, this stage, when you are bringing bhakti, devotion, it is removing vikshepa, distractions of the mind. But along with devotional movement, your willpower undergoes a change. So devotion and meditation blend together, it's called upasana. In other words, once you have experienced Sweetness coming from divine 
movement. Now your will is, how can I enjoy it? You see the difference between sweetness arising out of your fulfillment in your heart and sweetness arising out of your eating waffles. <laughs> You go for the higher sweetness. Even while you enjoy waffle, you begin to realize it doesn't have its own sweetness. It comes from that. So that type of switching the mind allows your meditation movement, undistracted by the world, your mind goes on enjoying closeness with God. Different forms of meditation become open for you. And then the third called avarana. Vikshepa is, means mind is constantly distracted. The distraction stops. Third one, avarana. Avarana is, is completely, it's just like a darkness is there and therefore you can't see things. Sun shines and darkness is not there. So it is something that has been there because of your mala and which shape. Some unknown veil has had overpowered your mind. But mala being sublimated, vikshepa being sublimated, the veil is no longer there. All that you have to do is lift up your head. Shake off your hairs. You say describe it easily for with a mirror. If you want to see your face in a mirror, you have three problems to face. <laughs> Holding the mirror steady. If your hand is shaking, your face will also shake in your mirror. <laughs> so you will not be able to see yourself correctly. So that karma yoga allows your hand to be steady. And when you are steady, when we begin to develop that stage, because of long addiction to body identity and dependence on the realities of the world, this long addiction, your mind cannot believe what you are seeing. In a calm state of mind, you allowed yourself to enjoy yoga nidra. You are universal. You are free from all. But that, that, that understanding is difficult for your mind to handle. So what happens? Mind now goes after many directions. Put it in a very gross way, <laughs> a spiritual seeker goes into satsanga and hears about siddhis and all the powers. And what best news? You are the one who can attain anything. You are the architect of your destiny. The moment you hear it and we are not mature enough, now, your mind goes into distractions. I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be that. Soon you get ten heads <laughs> in ten directions. That vikshepa, that's called the second knot of the heart, the distractions, mind is intelligent, it knows the joy of virtuous deeds, but it's so distracted, it doesn't know which way to go. There are so many ashrams. Each ashram is promising something very new. <laughs> so where to go? Let it be, one month I will go there, 
Next month I will go there. Third month I will go there. Another place. You are going everywhere purposeful, but you are not enjoying anything, not gaining any success. So, Vikshepa is overcome by Upasana movement, which is devotion to God plus medi practice of meditation. Both are blended. And when you have overcome that, when the mirror is now First, you held the mirror steady in your hand. Second, you held your vision steady, not flickering. The mirror, if mirror is shaking, your face is moving in many directions. So you are not recognizing who you are. Now, if by upasana you have made You have corrected that. You are ready to see yourself instead of being distracted. Ready to focus on who am I. And that becomes highlighted in your personality. So now you can bear to see yourself beyond all your imagination. And so the last stage is just a matter of lifting up your head now. Of the time you are moving away, putting the head down while the sun is up. So this is what Uddhalaka describes. Having separated himself from the body, the sage experienced an indescribable state. He came, became one with the divinity, who is homogeneous, pure and eternal, and the ocean of bliss. That state is now being described. He became a steady like a flame of a lamp, unaffected by wind, or like a painted picture, or like an ocean without waves, or like a cloud that doesn't yield rain, cloud that is free of moisture, is melting away. That these are the descriptions of that state of enlightenment. When it becomes secure, you are enlightened. As long as you are not secure and progressing, you are evolved. Sage Uddhalaka remained immersed in Samadhi for a very long time. During that period, he saw the Siddhas with great psychic powers and gods that dwell in the heavenly regions. Now this description is given to give you a, an insight that that attainment Far excels all imaginations of a spiritual aspirants. Spiritual aspirants in early stage, they become interested in psychic powers. So if you are doing sadhana and someone says, he will give you a special pranayam that will give you ability to lighten up your body. You can levitate. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> Even there are worse temptations. <laughs> and so are ready to give up your sadhana for a small little attainment. When you have come to advanced state, all these, te these, these temptations that are very important for the masses, have no meaning. One side is liberation, another side temptations of Siddhis. Temptation of Siddhis have no meaning compared to liberation. One side you are allowing to go to get into the Surya Loka, sun. Another illuminations and shadows of the sun. 
no matter how wonderful illumination, sun secures it. And when you have the possibility of realizing the sun versus real, uh, realizing the, uh, the illuminations, the sun becomes your highlight. Otherwise, you are dull with it. <laughs> so, the storyline, all psychic powers have started coming to him. And gods came. Then Siddha, Siddhis, capable of bestowing upon a person the glory of Indrahood, presented themselves before the sage. But considering them to be mere toys in the hands of children, he did not accept them. So all talks of siddhis and powers, they are toys of children. Alpam, little. Spiritual goal is your purpose, liberation. For six months, the sage remained absorbed in this blissful samadhi. Just allegorically, for now he stayed in that state of wisdom for a long period of time. And as a result of this, he became Jivan Mukta, liberated in life. And with this I will conclude for today. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukma Bandhanan Prityor Mukshyama Amritat Um Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyant, Makas Dukbahad Bhavet, Asato Ma Sadgamaya, Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityor Ma Mritam Gamaya, Om Puna Madaha Puna Midam, Puna Puna Mudachyate, Puna Sya Puna Madaya, Puna Me Vavashishyate, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Hari Om Tatsat.